Hi there, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining me for this week's Crypto Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I am not on video today. I've been quite sick with a sore throat. I got my voice together enough to record this, so I'm going to go through what's going on. Um, I think I messed myself up by going through several weather changes in the last couple of days. I went from the, the cold to the hot to the cold to the hot, and now I have no voice and sore throat. So changing the climate, not so great. But anyway, I'm in a place where it's very easy to do that. It's very easy to drive a few hours and change your climate completely. So anyway, um, yes, we uh, recently went, I'm going to get into a visit we just made to the ancient ruins of Palenque and how there was some really amazing information that came together from our guide that we hired to show us around um, that really validates and confirms a lot of things I have seen and been saying for a long time. So it's interesting. You get really interesting pieces of history from people who are natives, who, you know, are from the, the region you're visiting. So um, I'll get into that in a minute. But this week, you know, we are post-solar eclipse, and the solar eclipse was on December 4th. And um, that may have had a pretty big impact on you. It may not have. I don't know. It affects everybody differently. Uh, for me, it's knocking out my voice, which is something I used to have and my giving me a sore throat, which is something I dealt with a lot when I was a kid. So it's an interesting thing to have come up. Not at all what I expected, but it is a total solar eclipse. So it is bringing something up that is has to do with a complete and total end of some kind. And that just because the eclipse is over, the impact of it is not. So we're going through some aftermath, even though it hasn't necessarily shown us, you know, the whole world changing on a dime. We will probably see some changes in the next several months that are really dramatic around the world that have to do with leadership and rulership of countries and things like that. But I want to get into this week. Oh, first of all, um, crypto also, of course, did drop. It dropped on the 5th. It started its drop in the middle of the night on the 4th, um, which is, you know, right after the eclipse happened, basically exactly when I expected it to start dropping, exactly when my members were prepared for crypto to be dropping. So I do have some forecasts on where it's going to go, and I will be doing a video later this week, hopefully my voice is better, where I am going with uh, my uh, pro and VIP members to talk about some trade opportunities when's a good time to be buying in and things like that. So um, if you want to join that, make sure you sign up at my site, Aura Right Media, AuraWright.media, A-U-R-A, right, W-R-I-G-H-T, dot media. So let's look at what's going on this week. Um, interesting, this week is, um, you know, everything is still really compressed on one side of the charts, which has been, you know, not new. That was been going, I spoke about that last week in the eclipse chart. So we are still, and this, this week it's even more so. So we're really feeling the lopsidedness of the world and that being out of balance doesn't feel good, right? So um, one of the first things going on here in this chart is Mars, which is about to move into Scorpio, but is, I mean, into Sagittarius, but is still in Scorpio. Mars is, um, quite intense in Scorpio. There's a, a big confrontation with our, our deeper, you know, like needs, wants, desires, especially in ways in which they have been thwarted where we're not getting what we want. This is in the first house. So there's a certain level of frustration, impatience, demandingness. I want it now. I want it my way. That is coming to the surface that is here for us to deal with. Now, we are all dealing with it in a different way. Either it's ourselves feeling frustrated and impatient and not sure what's wrong, or we're dealing with someone else who's acting like that, and now we're trying to deal with kid gloves, or we're trying to extract ourselves from dealing with such people. So um, there's just a lot of this type of, maybe I guess we could say infantile and very frustrated behavior or attitude that is coming out this week. Excuse me, I need to also drink my tea so that I keep my voice. But, um, and that is going to be a, a little, you know, it's, it is frustrating. However, the Mars um, in the first house is making a 
semi-sextile to uh, Venus and Pluto in conjunction. So there's an ability for people to get what they want, but like it's never enough. This is a certain like, just like I said, sort of childish, like I really want to get what I want, right? And Venus and, Nept Venus and Pluto conjunct later this week is really a great opportunity for some of us to make some money. It's a, it's a short term money opportunity. If this was hitting you at some, you know, critical degree in your chart, like if you had planets at 24, 25 degrees Capricorn, as long as it's not Saturn, or even if it was Saturn, but I would, you know, any planet in that between 22 and 28 degrees Capricorn in your chart, I'd say go out, buy yourself a lottery ticket. This is a really good week for you where you could actually have a major, major windfall. So a lot of people who do have planets in that range, especially in earth signs, can do very well this week, can make some big headway financially. So it's a, it's a great opportunity, but it is very short lived. It only lasts a couple of days. So, you know, it's always nice when these kind of things happen to grab them grab the bull by the horn, so to speak, says the Taurus about bulls. So grab it and take advantage of any opportunities that are being presented. And um, the um, other thing going on here with Mars is Mars is squaring Jupiter. So Mars expects too much right now, um, thinks there's too much, it, it wants things to be too easy, uh, thinks just overreaching spreading ourselves too thin, putting our energy out too much, which obviously I just did. So I have to take it easy for a couple of days to recuperate. But um, all of that Mars squaring uh, Jupiter energy can be a lot, of, a lot of just excess and bragging and big, big talk, right? Um, especially in like either social settings where there's a lot of people around or in the media or public or it's a it's a lot of bandstanding it's like the last hurrah for this energy because i mean over time you're going to see it's like it's it's like a statue you know someone standing on a pedestal making big proclamations to their loyal crowd only that statue is sitting on quicksand and so over, and that quicksand is being revealed. So over these coming months, you're going to start to see these kind of babyish types of personalities kind of sink into this quicksand. And all the people who are like clinging to their coattails and saying, oh, you're fabulous, or allowing them to do this kind of capture kind of a, a behavior are all going to kind of sunk, sink down with them into this mire. So there is a, a real separating happening. So you definitely want to deal with this energy and deal with any feelings of rejection, being shut out, or, you know, just anger, any of that that's coming up because a lot of Mars energy this week that is difficult and hard to deal with. So that's just the first signature of this chart. And then we also have, let's talk about Uranus over here with Uranus and Saturn moving into a square. That square does not peak yet. We still have a few more weeks before it hits its peak, but it is increasing tensions in some sort of like, in a way where like the, you know, the tension's going to break. It's, it's getting to that point. So Uranus on the seventh house cusp in this chart is uh, a lot of unpredictability. People that you would expect to be totally predictable. People are always the same in your life, your friends, family members, especially partnerships, relationships, one-on-one -on -one partnerships. Those people, just other. I mean, the seventh house is like other, any one-on-one -on -one relationship where you expect people to behave a certain way. They can be flying off the handle, acting weird, doing unexpected things, taking a strange U-turn. And you're going to see a lot of strange and unpredictable behavior. And there's a lot of drama and um, issues that are unfolding right now that are related to control issues because of that Saturn Uranus square. And right now, Taurus, the bull, is very consistent usually, but we have Uranus in Taurus for a very long time. And Uranus is so unpredictable and Taurus is so consistent and wants things to be just the same all the time. So you might see some Taurus people fly off the handle because things aren't the way they always make them. Or you might also just see some 
uh, just things that you expect to be there won't won't be there and a lot of rebellion and conflict that's coming up around rules and structure and um, authority all of this like I'm not playing by your rules kind of a thing is definitely highlighted very heavily all this week and it's only getting worse for the next couple of weeks and it's going to reach a point where these are conflicts that cannot be um, resolved there's going to be some tearing of some kinds of relationships some kinds of communications with people where it's like I can't deal with this with you or whatever unfortunately this is going on everywhere this is part of the great awakening the great separating of the wheat from the chafe that is happening in the world those people who are grounded centered and connected to the spirit to the higher forces of life are the ones who are going to sail through this more easily it's not that you won't come out with some difficulty it's just that you're not going to fall into those things those traps that could get you killed which is what's going on in the world like if you're just going to accept authority and not stand up for yourself well right now we're at a time in humanity where that can get you killed so um that's where we're at and that's kind of what these conflicts are really all about they may not seem life or death but on some level, they actually are. So um, that's that square that's taking place. And it, it's, the tension is strong this week in our partnerships. So it's very difficult to have smooth relationships with people. No matter who they are, <laughs> all these tensions are going to be felt because everybody's feeling the tension. It's, it's everywhere. So the best way to deal with it of course is always to deal with ourselves and do the inner work that is going to be the fastest way to clear up the outside garbage what else what else is going on this week after i gave you guys all that great news um we do have um well the venus pluto thing is really very helpful um we do have a conjunction well it's kind of wide now but early in the week mercury conjuncts the sun bringing news and information, uh, especially for Sagittarius people, you can get some sudden messages that just change everything, that change the entire atmosphere and the entire you know status quo, especially related to something long-term and something lasting. It could be, um, it could be the end of something that you have uh, consistently expected to be there in your life. It could just be some, it's just some big trans, transformational energy there. Um, it's a tension with Neptune. So this is bringing messages that do change our outlook on things because it's an end to something that we thought was there, like the end of the pension fund or the end of the uh, health insurance or the end of the, um, the membership at the Y. I mean, it could be just about anything, but it could be the end of your refrigerator. I mean, it could be like an electronic that breaks down. So there is something here that is of endings, um, especially related to Pisces and Sagittarius people and messages that do relate to completing and ending old cycles. And uh, the moon, well, we don't talk about it too much because it moves very fast. And so for the week, it's in three different signs over the course of the week. But later in the week, the moon will conjunct Neptune and bring sort of the emotional reality of some of these endings home to roost for us and, and like make us recognize that maybe there's some other area that we need to develop. Like if we've been too one-sided or too focused in one area of our lives, another area is calling us and saying, all right, I need some attention. Pay attention to this side of me or that side of me or, or whatever it is that hasn't been getting a lot of attention. So that's really the horoscope for the week. You know, that's really what's going on with the astrology is that because it's all about sort of Scorpio on the ascendant, and having this outlook of deep transformation and change and how do we deal with places that don't work for things that don't work for us anymore and where do we go put our energy when one th one door is closed the new door will open but in the meantime we have to be in the hallway for a little while so here we are looking around in the hallway like well i don't it's kind of dark here and it doesn't feel that good i'm not sure where to go next and that's a lot what this week feels like um we also have the, the nodes getting ready to backtrack out of Gemini, out of this endless, you know, loop of information and ideas and thoughts and sharing stories back and forth 
into the realm of the here and now, into the realm of the solid, the physical, and the Taurus. And that's all going to happen before the end of this year. We'll be moving into a more physical focus, more tangible focus on the reality around us. Part of that is going to come from external circumstances that will make us need to pay a lot more attention to what's around us. So, um, and then I wanted to talk about Palenque, about that trip. I went to this ancient ruin. It's a series of ruins, actually. The city of Palenque used to have 800,000 people there. It was a massive, massive city. And our guide was amazing because this guy, Victor, who was our guide, um, started studying with paleontologists, with, you know, anthropologists, not paleontologists, anthropologists since he was, since 1965. So the man was like, I don't know, 70 years old. He was fantastic. He had all these great uh, insights about all the information and all the discoveries that have been found there. So a lot of, first of all, very little of Palenque has been uncovered. Tons of it, probably, I mean, well more than half of it. I mean, at least, I would say at least 70 to 80% of it is still underground and buried in the jungle. So there's a, and even the, the structures that you see, you're only seeing a part of them. There's a lot more underground. So they're only show, we're only seeing a little bit of what was once this amazing, huge city and um, that had this incredible aqueducts, aqueduct system of, of drainage, all things that we should be able to do now, but of course we haven't been able to figure it out. They had, and basically what our guide Victor was telling us was a lot about how they used to have metal tools. That's how they cut all those stones, you know, the, uh, the, official narrative will tell us things like we don't know how the you know egyptians moved a 25 ton block of granite we don't know how they did it they rolled it across the ground on sticks right they'll tell us this stuff that really doesn't make sense <coughs> excuse me victor is saying oh yeah well it was the aliens we know that the aliens were here and that they were helping and i'm like oh my god i love this guy our guy victor he understands about the aliens and then he's showing us all these pictures of these artifacts he's like where do you, where does this artifact look like it came from we're like that one looks like china how about this one well that looks like indonesia how about this one that looks uh egyptian he's like right 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 all these artifacts were here all at the same time and he's, and, and he's saying that this tomb that they've published and say was there since 100 years before Christ, he's like, that's wrong. That carbon dating says it was here since 1,000 years before Christ. So essentially, the story I got from our guide was that this ruin, this city, this ancient city of Palenque, used to be a... Th and, and by the way, the tribes, there's at least 10 tribes of people, all with languages that sound remarkably similar to oh hebrew or chinese and there are these ancient and we were driving through this part of mexico listening to people talking to them and their native tongue sounds like some of them sound they have like an arabic sound to them and this is what uh our victor guide our guide victor was telling us is that all these people came and then the new one who had more people took over so you had and the people were coming from all around the world because from, you know, there's the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean on both sides. And that people came from, you know, Asia to this part of the world. And people came from, you know, Europe and, you know, that, uh, all over that part of, you know, to this part of the world and the, and the whole Caucasus and that whole side. So we have a thriving international center of trade is what Palenque once was. It was once a massive city that was kind of the center of the trade that happened um, around the world. And there's all kinds of artifacts that prove it. And it was really interesting to listen to him. Um, one of the other things he said was that, and so the question is, so like there's a, a story of like, what happened to all the people? Why did they all disappear? And the official story is that, uh, you know, they just uh, basically collapsed their system because they didn't have good agricultural practices. They depleted the soil and then they could no longer feed themselves and they all just sort of left, right? That's the official story. But that is not the story. Um, Victor said that what happened, and there's evidence that what happened was a giant meteorite, meteorite slammed into the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and created the Gulf of Mexico. And that's how we have the Gulf of Mexico. This was discovered by oil companies when they were drilling for oil out there in the 
Atlantic, in the Gulf, in the Gulf of Mexico. They found the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico is filled with a giant asteroid. And they just kind of keep it quiet. They don't really tell you about it, even though factually, if you dig and you look for it, you can find that information. So um, it's just really interesting to get all of this uh insight into a part of the world that's incredibly fascinating was probably was very much the center of the world at one point one of the main trade centers one of the uh the kings he showed he showed us images like statues that showed that there was a visit here from king tut king tut had visited and that one of the uh pharaoh's kings i don't know what you would call them of this particular region um, was a very tall man. Um, we don't know necessarily his ethnicity, but he, his wife was very definitely Chinese. He was married to a Chinese woman. So there's all of this kind of really interesting international history. If you actually just look at the pictures and draw the logical conclusions and connect the dots between the pieces of information that are there. So that was the story I wanted to tell you guys, the information I wanted to share about a very cool visit to a very cool ancient city. And um, at that, I will let you go. If you want to come and join me for the call later this week on some trade opportunities, please go visit my site and sign up. The link is down below in the description box. Thank you guys for joining me and I will see you all soon. Bye bye.